thank you for letting me speak my mind. Uh, I originally had all kinds of notes here, and uh, uh, I was going to read from them, but uh, as I'm listening to the different speakers, and, and they're much more eloquent and articulate than I can be, uh, I'm just going to tell you some experiences I've had in, uh, in, in Boston Spa where I live. Uh, my first exposure to Common Core was reading an article uh, in one of the local uh, uh, news releases that uh, stated that about 20 years ago this same set of guidelines or curriculum, if you want to call it that, uh, had been proposed on a federal level and introduced by a group of people at the federal level. And of course, when they looked at the program, the senators realized that this was not good, even though it was very politically correct and couched in lovely prose and lofty explanations, that it wasn't what they wanted for the children of this country. They were so dead set against it that they actually wrote a bill. It was called Senate Resolution 66 that basically outlawed any implementation of this, what's now called Common Core Curriculum. The vote was 99 to 1. So here you have a 100-member Senate voting 99 to 1 to establish a bill to prohibit this curriculum from ever being adopted by the federal government. There are also three separate laws that have been in place since about 1964 that prohibit the federal government from uh, sticking their fingers into state level educational systems. Uh, that's one of the reasons why this program is now called Common Core State Standards. It couldn't be called Common Core Federal Standards because it would be against the law at three different levels of a federal law. So they've conveniently dropped the, those titles of, of, uh, of curriculum guidelines and said, no, we're going to call it state guidelines, state law. Uh, I, for about 16 years, I, I was a church assignment speaker with the uh, Gideon's International Ministry in my county. Uh, I'm used to speaking to very large audiences. Wish there were more people here tonight. That's part of the problem. Enough people don't know about this common core curriculum that's coming down the pike. Uh, meetings weren't scheduled, and I'm sure as state legislatures, probably most of you weren't informed when this was first trying to be instituted uh, for development and uh, implementation in New York State. Were, were any of you, uh, this, uh, you know, taken aside and it, was it shown to you, this is what we'd like to do, uh, this is a great program, you know, we want to we get this going in the state? Was there any, you know, assembly discussion or any state assembly or state senate discussion on this subject? Probably not. I wasn't in office. Well, I have to answer your question. Yeah. Again, the best, the best uh, analysis is that this was hatched behind this was hatched behind closed doors with a bureaucracy. Right. And then launched in the middle of the night, and then we're dealing with the consequence. Right. And that's why we're here today because. We're, right. we're concerned, and that, that's why right. we're holding hearings across the state for, for this reason. We're learning. Right. Right. For, if, I, I just learned some new things from you today. Yeah. Then you weren't aware of where the money, you know, there's that old saying, follow the money. You want to know what the problem is, follow the money? Yeah. The, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, okay? That was the foundation that everybody said didn't want to mention. Uh, here's a man that, uh, he's a proponent of eugenics. He leans towards socialist ideas. Uh, him and his wife, and they have literally thrown hundreds of millions of dollars, and believe me folks, money speaks loudly to someone who needs it or desires it. Uh, they've thrown hundreds of millions of dollars into this common core curriculum. And you've got to scratch your head and say, well, why would that be? Well, they probably stand to make a lot more money coming back to them because not only have they thrown over $200 billion into the Common Core, uh, into the flagship called Common Core, uh, but they've, uh, they've also purchased several companies surrounding educational needs, book publishers, uh, standards and, and, and data collection agencies. Uh, they, they've purchased several of these, okay? Um, 
So you got to understand where this is coming from. Another problem I have with this Common Core is that the people who inputted most of this information that they're going to use to in Common Core, all right, are you familiar with the name uh, uh, of William Ayers or, uh, or his wife, Bernadine Dorn? Do, do those two names ring a bell with anyone here? How about Linda Darling? Hammond to Darling, yeah, yeah, uh, a 60s and 70s radical along with uh, Mr. Ayers and his wife, uh, Miss Dorn. Um, it is said, and I can't prove it, but I've read probably a dozen articles concerning his hand, which sa is said to be all over the Common Core curriculum because it's his style of instruction. And his style of instruction was, uh, if I can get a hold of just your children for just four years. I can change the world. I can change the political economic system in this country. I can do with it as I please. About 50 to 60 percent of Common Core content has Mr. Ayers and Ms. Dorn's fingerprints all over it. Their style, their ideas, their ideology, and for any of you who aren't familiar with their ideology, their uh, I think some of the news media, news media like to call them unrepentant terrorists, but that's in fact what they are. These people were federal felons. They were arrested and, uh, and uh, charged with murder and bombing the Pentagon, bombing police stations. Um, just the kind of people that you'd want to have an input in your child's education, which now you're kind of thinking, well, what direction could that be in? Mr. Ayers is quoted as saying that it would be, it, it's a perfect seedbed, Common Core, a perfect seedbed for indoctrination. Okay, and what do you suppose that indoctrination would be, considering this man's ideology? Uh, most likely socialist leaning. So, I mean, I know that I sound a little bit like one of these right-wing conspiracy lovers, but this, folks, you can't lie awake at night and make this stuff up. If you want to research this and look into it and study it, the more you do, the angrier you're going to get and the more bizarre it gets to the point where you've got to say, this can't happen in my country. This is the United States of America. This can't happen here. Wake up. It's happened. And I hope it's not too late. But I just want, wanted you to be aware of its origins, all right, and uh, the start of it. And uh, it's, in my mind, it's an insidious evil uh, that we don't need to fix it. We don't need to put a Band-Aid on it. We need to scrap it and move it out of this country because it is a bad, bad way to educate our children. And uh, yes, I do have some horses in the races. I have uh, four grandchildren that go to school in New York. And uh, I'm deeply, deeply concerned for them and, of course, my kids, the parents of those kids. So that's all I wanted to say. I don't need to read facts and figures. I don't need to, you know, give you all kinds of dates and, uh, and, and things like that. Thank Understand you. where it's coming from. Understand what their intent is, and you'll vote it out of here very quickly. Thank you very, very much, Paul. Thank you.